Jimbo over here at Fight Fast on behalf of my business partner, Bob Pierce, and the rest of the crew. Today, I'm honored to have with me two of the most accomplished individuals that you're ever going to meet, uh, Dr. Dale Comstock and Joe Teddy. Uh, these two uh, recently had great success at transforming the lives of average guys who are looking to get in better shape, build their confidence level, and learn some badass skills in the process. Okay, so who are these guys and why are they qualified to turn you into a stronger, more confident, better looking you? Well, their credentials are probably going to blow you away. I'll start with Dale Comstock. Dale and I have known each other for a lot of years. He's a fight fast instructor and we've worked together on a lot of different self-defense and survival product, products uh, and projects. Let me give you a brief overview of some of Dale's accomplishments and then I'll tell you a little bit about Joe's. But over the last 35 years, Dale has uh, served in every campaign from Grenada to the present day conflicts as a frontline combatant, directly engaging the enemy, either as a paratrooper, a Green Beret, Delta Force operator, or a paramilitary contractor. He has been decorated twice for valor in combat. Dale was the expert who explosively breached the Modella prison in Panama during the 1989 U.S. invasion to rescue Kurt Muse. Dale has a six degree black belt in American Open Karate and Extension Fighting with a first degree black belt in Jiu Jitsu. He's a professional, he's a former professional boxer, kickboxer, MMA fighter, and competitive bodybuilder. Dale has a doctorate in natural and alternative medicine, a master's degree in business and organizational security management, and a degree in education. He's fluent in German with a working knowledge of Spanish and Portuguese. He also speaks English pretty good. He is a certified locksmith, special security and anti-terrorist driving instructor, professional canine trainer and handler, combat tracker, Delta Force firearms and close quarters battle instructor, FBI firearms instructor, NSA operational security manager, waterborne insertion expert, and advanced urban warfare unassisted asset. Dale is also featured on Discovery Channel's One Man Army and featured on NBC's Stars Earn Stripes alongside Terry Crews. Since that time, Dale has participated in numerous Hollywood productions and has even authored his own book, American Badass, which is the, his life story from ch childhood to present day. He's 57 years old. I, I think that's right, isn't that, Dale? Right. <laughs> He's a grandfather has more has done more in his life than most guys will ever dream of, as you can just see by this thing I just laid out for you. And he's still going with something that we call, or that he calls, him and Joe call, peak performance workshop and coaching program that he's now conducting with uh, Joe Teddy. Uh, thanks, Dale, for joining us today. It's good thanks to see you me. again, man. As much as this seems, uh, th these guys are even more accomplished than what I'm laying out here. So that said, Joe Teddy is a veteran of both U.S. military and U.S. government special operations unit. He's a former Force Recon Marine, Army Special Forces Green Beret, and a former operative in a highly, highly classified government counterterrorist unit. Uh, he is a combat veteran of both Operation Iraqi Freedom in Iraq and Operation Enduring Freedom in Afghanistan. He planned and conducted a broad range of special operation missions. Uh, let's just say these missions gave our president another option when uh, other military or political solutions just weren't available. So uh, I'll just leave it at that. We're, we're talking about missions that required rapid response with surgical applications while maintaining the lowest profile possible. Joseph has participated in numerous classified direct action missions with several tier one special mission units that include U.S. Army Delta, U.S. Navy SEAL Team 6, British and Australian SAS regiments, and Canada's JTF-2. He has also deployed for Operation Uphold Democracy and Operation Maintain Democracy in Haiti. He has performed high-risk personal security detail operations in Afghanistan and Iraq for the U.S. government and for civilian clients. He was also a member of a U.S. State Department close protection team assigned to several high-profile government officials and visiting uh, diplomats in Israel. He has extensive experience and training in fully armored vehicle operations, advanced team operations, motorcade operations, counter-assault team operations, and surveillance and counter-surveillance operations. He is both HALO and SCUBA qualified, which represents less than 1% of all Special Forces soldiers and he has held the highest security clearance awarded by the U.S. government. 
Joe was also a co-star as, as you know, I, I know I've used to watch this show, but uh, uh, on dual survival on the discovery channel. So both Dale and Joe have been around the block a few times. Basically, if you were a bad guy and you were on these guys shit list for, for whatever reason, you were going to have a real bad day. Uh, you know, but don't worry about it. That day wasn't going to last long. So <laughs> welcome to our podcast, Joe and Dale. I tell you, Thank man, you it's know. an honor to, to have you guys here. Uh, I'm just going to going to throw out some questions here. First question I got is, is for Joe. How do you guys know each other? How do you and Dale know each other? Yeah. So, um, I met Dale, um, in the unit that, uh, that I was a member of the, the government CT unit. I met Dale there and, um, you know, Dale's a, he's one of those guys, uh, kind of like, um, when he talks, you want to listen. The guy just, he, him and I hit it off. I respect him highly uh, for all of his accomplishments, and we just have maintained uh, friendship over, what is it, Dale, almost 14 years now, 15 years, something like that, which is really, because a lot of guys don't, which you think guys in special ops would, but Dale and I have maintained a friendship, and then uh, uh, one day we were just talking, and Dale mentioned to me that he was doing performance coaching, and I was like, wow, you know, that's pretty cool, I've heard of it, you know, and he's like, dude, you'd probably be pretty good at it, so we formed Tier 1 Performance Coaching, and um, things are doing really well, man. We're, we're getting a lot of clients. And uh, we're actually picky. We don't take everyone, obviously, sir. Um, you, you've got to um, be a certain type of person for us to coach, obviously. Um, but, yeah, so I've known Dale a long time. We, we you know, we deployed down range together and everything. So uh, it's a really good fit. We're very good. Um, we're very um, synergistic with each other, which is important, you know. So, uh, you know, you guys are, you guys are working on a coach coaching program together. Um, you know, and to, to, just to paraphrase, uh, an old, old quote here, uh, uh, can't remember the writer who, who said this, but you know, most men are, are leading this kind of, you know, quiet lives of desperation, you know, and we've got, a, we got a lot of hot list guys, um, who, who may, you know, I'm not going to say they fit that description exactly because we all got something happening in our lives, but you know, if you're 35 plus, you know, 40, 50, 60 years old, you know, of course you lost some juice over the years and uh, you know, they're, they're, you know, with what's going on today with the pandemic, you know, they're in you know, lockdowns and people sitting around watching TV, eating chips all day. Um, you know, it, it just, it, you know, it, it's, it's got a certain psychological effect on guys, you know, you're gaining weight, you're not looking good. Uh, you know, maybe your se sex life is just kind of plummeting. Uh, you know, these are all things that as guys, you know, uh, you know, it's like, Hey, look, you know, how, how, how do I just become a better, a better version of me, you know, without, uh, without having to, without having to, uh, you know, be in the gym for, you know, four hours a day, seven days a week. But you know, the, the fact of the matter is, you know, the average guy doesn't have to do that. You know, there's a, there's a lot of just simple things that you, that you could be doing. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, why don't yeah, you start um, now? I'll jump in on this one. So um, <clears throat> I've been coaching for about three years, a little over three years now. And uh, I do it as a side business or was doing it as a side business. And then, as Joe mentioned, you know, we teamed up a while back and decided to uh, take this to another level. Um, one of the things that we're finding is, you know, a lot of our clients at one point were men between the ages of 45 and 55, roughly. Um, those were our demographics. And then the other – demographics was young men from 20 to 26 the 45 to 55 year old class you know there's some young, younger and some older um they come to us with a lot of the same issues right um kind of call them the old man clan and what happened is they you know <laughs> spent their whole life you know working and taking care of their family doing all the right things and honorable things and they end up neglecting themselves and one day they wake up and look in the mirror and go damn I'm in my third trimester of pregnancy. What happened to me? You know, and life has passed me by, and I'm looking at Comstock and Ted Eye over here living this dream. You know, Joe, I don't know if people know it or not, but, you know, Joe is 55 years old. I'm 57 years old, and uh, we're as fit and spry and, and uh, living the life of, of a, you know, a 25-year-old rock star. So, um, you know, and so these guys see that, and they're like, man, how do I get that? You know, how do I recover and recapture that, you know, so to speak? And, uh and so what we do is we provide optimal performance coaching. So I say optimal because, you know, I don't like 
from so much peak performance because I've in, that you know that insinuates you're always at this high level, which we can never maintain. It's it's more like this all the time. So rather than being in this kind of a, a of a wave, so to speak, sine wave, I would rather be down here somewhere, you know, in that 75 percentile, always steady going across the board. <clears throat> I think you'll find more, you know, happiness and satisfaction and success at that range and always trying to go up and down and up and down because, man, that's got some deleterious effects, too, on the psyche, you know, and your emotions when you're always, you know, you're, you're, you go up and then you're down, you're up and you're down like Jesus Christ, Jiminy, you know, let's, let's just try to keep it steady, but on a higher level. So what we do is... Uh, <clears throat> And by the way, we have a lot of women client now clients also. And f ironically, they're also in that 45 to 55 year old range. So um, I guess we can call them the old woman clan. I don't know what we want to call them, but you know, the, the reality is, you know, at that age, you're not old. Okay. That's a misnomer. And uh, you know, you're only as young or as old as you, as you decide you want to be. And so what we're here to, what we try to do is help guys, um, challenge paradigms, look at their lives and go, you know what, is all this crap that I believe, is this really right or did I buy into a lie, right? Because from, from childhood, we're inculcated into this mindset that, you know, things are a certain way. By the time you reach 30, you know, you've already got one leg in the grave. And by the time you hit 45, you might as well just go ahead and bury yourself. You know, it's not like that. And uh, I was raised that way. And uh, lucky I had some good examples later in life of, of older men and women that like, wow, you know, they, they, they broke the par paradigm. And so... Um, and I realized that anything's possible. And to your point earlier, you know, I have a doctorate in alternative medicine, natural health. And the only reason I got that, believe it or not, um, I try to keep give you the Raiders Digest version. I was, so I've been a canine, I have a canine trainer since about the age of 15, so over 40 years. And, uh, you know, several years ago, I learned how to ride horses. I mean, you know, earnestly um, through the government agency that Joe and I worked for. They wanted me to learn how to ride horses, pack mules, things like that for combat. And um, which was interesting is I, one of the things I walked away with was it was very hard to tell the difference between a six-year-old horse and a 32-year-old horse. And uh, other than the superficial scarring, other than that, you know, the, the muscle tone, the, uh, the endurance, the energy, and all that was still there. And I thought, well, why is that so different from, you know, why can't we be like that? You know, not just horses, but a lot of pack animals and different types of animals. You know, they basically live at, you know, at, at this high level of performance right until the day they just dot, drop off and die, you know, and uh, because, they, you know, they, they, they live to the maximum. And so I thought, why can't we do that? So I started researching it and realized that, uh, yeah, we've been eating, you know, we've been fed a bunch of bullshit is what we've been feeding. Uh, they've been feeding us. So, you know, basically in order for us to live longer, we got to take all kinds of medicine and, and, you know, trips to the doctor and all this crap. And we got caught up into the system where that's our longevity is dependent on that. Whereas, you know, it's not. And so, you know, what we try to do is teach people how to live better, healthier, um, you know, extend your life so that, you know, when you're a hundred years old, you're not a hundred years old, a wheelchair laying on your back, taking a bunch of pills. Um, you're on your feet still swinging and, and getting it on. Right. So my goal is to be at least a hundred years old and die on my bed, having sex, you know, that's what I want to do. And so <laughs> I'm going to live to be a hundred. And that's what we're trying to teach guys. Not only the, the fitness part of it, because that's only one part of this, uh, you know, Joe and I teach what's called psychosoma engineering. It's a concept that we created. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's proprietary. And basically what we're teaching is basically making your body whole um, so that it can support, you know, your mind and another aspect, which I'll talk about here in a minute. So the second part is the mind, the mindset, self-governance, self-leadership, how to think differently, how to think outside the box, how to regulate your uh your, your emotions, how to, you know, how to de develop your success potential. So we talk about those things. And then we go into a third, uh, third leg, which is um, the ether, right? And people talk about the mind, body, spirit. We don't talk about the spirit um, in the sense of, you know, the Holy Spirit or rah, rah, you know, cheerleader spirit. We talk about the spirit in terms of uh, the ether, the fifth element. You know, what is the fifth element? You have earth, wind, fire, water, and the fifth one is ether energy, right? The metaphysical world. Everything in this planet is based off of energy. That's physics. Albert Einstein said the same thing. If you want to be successful in life, you have to get on success frequency. It's literally an electromagnetic frequency. Um, I can go on all day long about frequency. We are energy. Within, we create our own energy. The world around us is energy. We're inundated with energy. Um, and so we go into those areas. And the fourth element we go into on request, we go into business development type stuff. Joe and I have been very successful in business. Um, as you know, Jim, I've got a company in Bali, Indonesia. How cool is that? I live in Indonesia. I have a security company there. I provide explosive detector dogs, patrol dogs, narcotic dogs for the local venues like Marriott hotels. 
And, um, you know, I'm basically, I turned a hobby into a business in Indonesia, in Bali. How cool is that, right? I live in paradise every day. And I, my job is not even a job. It's fun. I get to do, you know, I get to play with my dogs and, and make a lot of money doing it. So that was, this is my third women, company. You know? um, I've had two of Yeah, of course. You know, I live, I'm surrounded by beautiful women, beautiful culture, beautiful weather, beaches. Um, but I created that reality. It didn't just come my way. I didn't kind of stumble into it. I created this reality. And so... Even backing up, I still had two other companies. I sold my first one to G4S. Many of you know it as Wacken Hut um, in 2004. And then I started another company. I sold it in 2011 um, to another company. And then I ended up in Hong Kong um, doing security work over there for a multi-billionaire investment banker. And then one thing, actually what led me to Indonesia was my girlfriend at the time. <laughs> I, you know, it's always, a, you know, a man's, you know, Achilles heel, man. So I, I followed my, now my <laughs> wife, my girlfriend at the time. So um, she got me. And so... We talk about business development stuff as well, and Joe can speak a lot to that. By the way, Joe was a uh, was a stockbroker among other things. So you know we have a, uh, oh, we have wow. a business uh, acumen as well that we provide. But uh, our mission in life is to help people be better versions of themselves, and uh, and and essentially self actualize, become this person of their dreams. Two percent of the population, only two percent of the population achieve their goals, uh, live the dream. You know, that's it, 2%. The other 98% are just focused on, I gotta, I gotta pay, pay the bills today, feed the family today, keep a roof over the head today. And if, before you know it, they're that 45 year old guy going, damn, damn, I missed all that. What happened? How do I get back to that, right? So that's where we are with, with our performance coaching. You know, I mean, that's uh, uh, what, you're, what you're, you're saying is hitting on all cylinders here. It's in terms of, uh, you know, what I've experienced myself is, you know, I had somebody a, a, a long time ago tell me, you know, Jim, if, if you want the kind of life that, you know, if you want to be a, a Dale Comstocker, you want to be a Joe Teddy, you know, you got to hang out with these guys, you know, uh, and, you know, and if you, if you don't do that, uh, you know, you'll, you'll just continue being what you currently are, you know, but if you, if you want to, if you want to change, one of the first things that you do is you start hanging out with and, and rubbing elbows with the kind of person that you want to be, you know, whether that's, you know, a stockbroker, if you want to be a stockbroker, hang out with stockbrokers, you know, if you, if you, if you want to be a, you know, if you want to be a, an American badass, hang out with Dale and Joe, you know, and, and, uh, and, and so you got a lot of guys on our list that just, just want to be a better version of them, you know, you know, it's, you know, feel better, look better, be in better shape and, and just have more confidence levels. And, and it, it really, that's what it sounds like you guys are providing. Uh, uh, Joe, could you talk a little bit about, um, you know, about you know, just some specifics about what somebody could expect to get out of out of your coaching program? Yes, sir. Um, so first off, our um, coaching program is eight weeks, and we kind of tailor it to the person's schedule. I mean, let's face it, sir. Everybody's busy. Um, sometimes they have to, you know, wait a day or two before we talk them. But we we um, tailor and customize our training programs uh, towards the person's schedule. Uh, we don't take on a lot of clients. Um, as a matter of fact, we have a certain number. And then after that, people are on a waiting list because it's all about quality, not quantity. Um, <laughs> one thing that's really funny too, uh, Jim, I've heard people say this to Dale and I, and it's almost funny because um, like, well, what certification do you have in performance coaching? <laughs> And I'm like, well, you know what? I'd like to know who is handing out certificates of performance coaching. As a matter of fact, I'm not going to name this person's name, but their father is probably one of the top life coaches in the world. And I spoke to this young man on the phone who was 35. And uh, he basically told me, there's nothing I can teach you based off of what you've done. So before people say, you know, what are your, your certifications? Our certifications, sir, are life experiences, real world not just, you know, I read this book, you know, hold on, on page five, I need to say this. It's not how we operate. Dale and I operate off a real world experience, real world education, um, not just some certificate that says that we're a performance coach. That's a total crop of, uh, crock of crap. Um, so um, our, our coaching sessions are an hour long. Uh, we use Zoom like we're using right now, uh, and it's one-on-one. -on -one. And then we also use a program called Boxer that you can put on your phone that people it's literally turns their phone into a walkie talkie that they can talk to us very quickly. Uh, and then after our coaching sessions are done, we don't just cut people away. This is another biggie. 
most performance coaching companies and life coaches will just, after you're done, thank you, bye. It's not how we operate. Our clients are kind of like clients for life. You know, I just had one of my clients I haven't spoke to in two weeks. He just called me and had a question on Boxer. I said, yes, sir. That's exactly right. So you, you're a client kind of for life. And so um, we, we feel that that's the right way to do business. But what I will tell you is this. Uh, our psychosoma training uh, is there's no other performance coaching company in the United States, actually probably in the world, that uses psychosoma training um, in our coaching sessions. And uh, what's so funny uh, is I really didn't even know what I was doing to be successful. I, I didn't understand. I knew what I was doing was working. But until I met Dale and he explained to me, like, dude, this is why this is working. I didn't even know what was going on. I just knew it was working, but didn't understand the, uh, the science behind it and the psychology behind it uh, and the physiology behind it. Uh, it's very in-depth. It's, it's, you know, one thing I will tell you this, it, you know, Dale and I, yeah, we've got some pretty badass military and government uh, special operations backgrounds. Sure. But uh, we're pretty educated guys, you know, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I was a stockbroker for Bear Stearns for five years. Um, I'm a cyber currency trader. I own a real estate investment company. Um, so for those that are listening, please don't look at Dale and I like, yeah, you, you guys are this and that because yeah, you spent 20 years doing it. That's part of who we are. It's part of us. Um, and, and that's a cool part, but it's not who we are as human beings. We've done a lot more. Dale's a very successful business guy. Uh, you know, I've, I've lost a fortune before, I got it back, lost it again, got it back. So, you know, uh, we're not all, everything we've done isn't platinum, platinum. Dale and I have failed. Are you kidding me? Who out there has not failed? Anybody that says that they have it, they're full of shit, Okay. We learn from our mistakes, and Dale and I have learned an awful lot. And we pass this on to our clients in the form of real world, like, let me tell you a story. Um, and so, yeah, our program, I'm very proud of it. Uh, it has become um, extremely effective. And let me tell you, we've got a few challenging clients, but in a very short amount of time, you, you are seeing changes in these people. And I got to tell you, uh, there's nothing more satisfying than knowing that you are changing a person's life for the better. I mean, how do you put a price on that? You, you can't. You can't. Yeah, so, we, we literally change. I mean, literally, if on our program, you can start affecting change overnight, literally. Um, and, and why? Because it's all based on science. It's based on physics. Um, it's, it's, you know, there's four sources of, uh, there's four sources of knowledge. And uh, not everybody has those four sources. Okay. It's, again, you know, Joe, I, Joe told me one time you have to always be a perpetual student. It's absolutely right. So, you know, the first source of knowledge is your, you know, formal education, whether it's going to school, college, whether it's reading books, whether it's doing internet searching, a formalized uh, version of, of, of learning. The second one is experiential knowledge, learning through experience by, you know, just by applying it and actually doing it, you learn a lot of information. The third one is hypo hypotheses or educated guesses. Really, you can't make an educated guess unless you have, you know, some type of formal knowledge or some type of experience, preferably both, to come up with um, possible solutions to hypothetical questions in life or whatever you may be doing. And then the fourth one is intuition, right? I talked earlier about this, uh, this fifth element, okay? And, uh, and really, that comes down to, to the mind. The mind and the, and the brain are two different things. The mind is something that has, doesn't have form, but it has substance. And, uh, and it's the creative side of who we are. In fact, it's, it's complete 100% responsible for everything we do or don't do in life. So, um, you know, we, we, we delve in those four areas, but essentially it comes back. This is all supported by science. It's not some psycho babble, you know, um, you know, we really get into some, some really areas that are off the charts that most people would maybe sneer at or roll their eyes. But you know what? People ask me all the time, Comstock, how were you able to achieve so much? Well, is because of this principle, these ideas, these this, this science that I'm talking about. Same with Joe. Um, so you can sneer and roll your eyes, um, but I'll be happy to compare resumes any day, compare successes. You know what? And here's the difference that separates Joe and I is there's a lot of niche coaches out there. They're good at one thing, right? They're really good, maybe in real estate or business, you know, and they're going to coach you how to be great, you know, and everybody in pursuit of money, 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 right? And um, 
the difference is between us and them is Joe and I have been successful in many, many different things. We're not niche, you know, niche success stories. Um, you know, you, you read off our bios and that's really just the tip of the iceberg, as you know, because you know me pretty well, Jim and Joe, you know, we have achieved so much um, in life that we're kind of like experts in a lot of different faith in a lot of different realms. And, uh, and that's the difference. We can apply what we, what we know, to anything, whether it's business, whether it's, you know, sports, whether, whatever it is, it doesn't matter. We apply these principles uniformly across the board. Whereas these niche coaches, they're really good at one thing. Um, and that's it. If you say, okay, you know, let's see you do this, you know, basically, you know, they're, they're, they're usually lost, man. It's going to take them forever to figure it out. So there's, there's a, again, a differentiator. And, you know, of course we're selling this business as well. Um, and I, I just want to, real quick interject something before we move down the road a little bit further for anybody out there that's listening. Um, we also have a, if you come to our website, tier one performance coaching.com, you can register your email. And basically what we'll do is provide, um, you know, you know, for a fee every month to become part of a, what we call give you an Intel update, so to speak. And then in that Intel update, there's information in there that we're not going to make it public just because, um, you know, we're, whether you want to believe it or not, we're in a state of a, a low intensity conflict right now, which is one of three phases of warfare. Um, we have gone out of the incipient stage and we're now starting to transcend to, into what the, the guerrilla warfare stage. We're at the low levels, but you're starting to see, I called it, I called it a month ago and put it out on, on social media. You know what? Expect ambushes, expect IEDs, expect this insurrection and look what's going on in Seattle right now. They've literally, they're holding down a seven blocks area. So, you know, what we do is we're not going to sit here and openly talk about, you know, um, you know, counter, you know, counter warfare techniques. We're not going to talk about information operations because we're not going to feed the adversary. Okay. And if you join this membership group, you know, we'll talk about it in this group with you. Um, of course, we're going to vet you. We're not going to just let anybody sign up. We're going to look at your social media sites. And if we think you're on the other side, um, no, you're not coming in. We'll give you, you know, we'll refund you a little money and you can go on and join the guys in Seattle or whoever. Um, but anyways, uh, I just put that out there because Joe and I take this very seriously, all life series. We, we want to help people. We want to coach people. Uh, we want to be people be successful. We also want people not to survive, but to thrive, right? And there's a differentiator too. I don't want to, I don't want to teach you to be a survivor. I want to teach you to be a thriver. I want you to thrive, embrace the suck. That's what we're trying to do. We're trying to make you, um, make you strong uh, in every way, physically, mentally, emotionally, um, professionally, everything that you do, we want to make you better people. And so, that's our that's our that's our agenda, and uh, you know, like again, come to our website tier one performance coaching dot com and and uh, look at the membership, you know, and again, you know, be part of a, a group here that uh, you know we'll we'll share you know on a monthly basis at least two free webinars, um, which in itself has a hundred dollar value. Plus, you know, uh, on the on the private page, we'll you know as a group, we'll also share information. I think is uh, could, could actually make you. Um, the difference between surviving and dying and, and or becoming uh losing your freedom. You know, and, and, uh, it, you know, the, the idea of just being held accountable, I mean, how much of that does, does, does it play into this? Uh, you know, I mean, uh, there's a motivation factor that both you guys got, you know, you, you seem to be just self motivated people. And, and I think that's unusual. Uh, I, I, I like to think of myself as being self motivated but I know there's a part of me that, you know, wants to sit on the couch, you know, eating, you know, having sex and not moving around too much. And, uh, and, you know, I was like, Hey man, you know, if I could just live like this and, and then of course, you know, that, that's, uh, that kind of thinking ends up kind of, uh, uh, you know, self perpetuating where pretty soon you're just out of shape. You're not feeling good about yourself. You're just not looking very good. And, um, and you're just not motivated to do anything. How much of what you guys do is a, a, a matter of just really kind of holding people accountable? Like, hey, man, did you do these three things that you said you were going to do? Which for me is a big deal. Because if I know if somebody's waiting for something from me, you know, and they're pinging me saying, hey, you know, uh, that, that motivates me. That gets me, that gets me going. Uh, it, gets me, it gets me moving. Uh, how much of that plays into what you guys are doing? That, that is a very, very good point. And it's huge because um, it's very easy for someone to say, okay, I'm going to write down all these goals. I'm going to, I'm going to stick it on my mirror every morning and I'm going to read them when I'm brushing my teeth. 
and I'm going to go to the gym and I'm going to do this. But if you do not have somebody holding your ass to the fire, it's very easy to make excuses. And, and to be quite honest, it's kind of hard when someone like Dale Comstock boxes you and said, Hey bro, did you go to the gym today? <laughs> you know, like it's kind of hard to give that guy an excuse why you didn't, y you better be sick or have a family emergency. And the thing is, you know, and Dale and I talk about it all the time. Dale and I, you know, war game stuff all the time. This is about mindset, you know, uh, mindset, 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 mindset. You've got to change the way you think. Once you do that, all of these doors open. Okay. Um, and, and I'll give you a very small example. Yeah, I'm 55. I don't like to admit my age, but I'm going to be honest with you. I'm as in better shape than I was when, you know, when I was 25. As a matter of fact, I'm training for an Ironman triathlon. And I remember uh, talking to some friends of mine, like, dude, you're going to have a heart attack. You're going to do this. And it's exactly what Dale said. Just because I'm 55 doesn't mean I can't try. Am I going to go out there and win the thing? No, I'm not going to. I'm not going to compete with pro athletes that are doing it for a hobby, uh, you know, and getting paid for it. But it's a goal of mine. I just want to complete it. It's a mindset. And that's what Dale and I not to toot our own horns. Look, we know what we know and we know what we don't know. Um, but what we were talking about, we've probably forgotten more about this stuff than what people know. And it's about instilling the planting those seeds, right? Germinating them, water, plant, water, plant. And it's exactly what you said, sir, holding these people accountable uh, in a professional way, obviously. And we've been very successful at it. As a matter of fact, I can't tell you their names but I've got a Formula One racer uh, as a client and an Olympic gymnast from Sweden. Now, you tell me why people at that level of the game are talking to guys like Dale and I. I'll, I'll interject something here as well. Um, so Joe and I have coached literally millionaires to, you know, blue-collar workers to teachers. In fact, I have – I actually have world-renowned performance coaches that I have coached, um, which is funny because my first question – why, why do you want me to coach you, right? And so, but they had the good answer. The good answer is if any coach worth his salt will go out and learn more from other coaches, right? So, um, <clears throat> but um, Jeremy Betham, he was a philosopher in eighteen hundred. He said, men, um, the, the human condition, right? Men would rather pursue pleasure and avoid pain, right? So that's our, that's our nature. You just said earlier, you would rather stay on the couch and eat Twinkies and, and have sex all day, right? I don't know how you can do that, but. <laughs> do You're the, the man, bro. <laughs> Are you having sex or was that before? I, I don't know. Um, so anyways, um, but uh, you know, that's, that's, you know, the human condition, right? That's who we really are. And in fact, you can watch it playing out right now on the news every day. So you got mail, you know, millions of people out there, and they're what? They're looking for the easy way out. Let's just break everything and steal it rather than working and earn it for it, working for it, right? And so 2% of the population, literally 2% of the population um, will self-actualize, will attain their dreams, right? Will literally go after that dream. And they'll put that pain, you know, on hold for a minute. I mean, that pleasure on hold for a minute and, and, and embrace the pain to get what they want. Actually, I, I can honestly say, um, I enjoyed the pleasure of playing at the pain at the same time. I didn't make any sacrifice, um, you know, because I didn't work harder. I worked smarter. And so I didn't miss out on anything, and I'm still where I want to be in life, and I'm enjoying it, right? And I didn't give anything up. Um, probably the only thing I gave up was marriages, and that's because I was never around, and that wasn't my fault, you know. I mean, came home, and, you know, and, and, and Jody, a pair of Jody's shoes about that big, you know, and it was coming to the bed. And like, Who the hell is that, man? So anyways, um, you know, so that's the human condition. And so you asked the question earlier, you know, um, you're holding people accountable. So there comes a point in life where you as an adult have to hold yourself accountable, right? All I, we can do is give you the mindset, the tools, the listen, you know, you need to self govern yourself. You need to, you need to apply uh, leadership traits to everything you do every day, even though maybe you're not leading anybody, but it's those leadership traits that are going to get you going. Um, you, you have to live a life that's a, is, is a, a balance between regimentation and flexibility, right? So, for example, you know, my day, I get up in the morning, I make my bed no matter what. Look, you know, I, if nobody's here, they're not going to know if my bed was made or not, but I do, right? So, I make my bed every damn day. I wash my sheets, okay? I, I wash my clothes. I don't wear the same old stinky crap. I go in, I, you know, I, I take care of myself in the toilet. You know, I, I put my clothes on. I come out here and I make to, to get my, my, my breakfast, take my vitamins, go to the gym. Those are part of my – that's part of my day that's inflexible, okay? Why? Because it sets, 
it sets the tone for the rest of the day. Everything else now is flexible, right? There's adaptability built in. You know, I might have, you know, as you, as you know, this morning, we had, to, we had to make some changes for this, for this webinar, right? So that's fine. You know what? I, I, can, I can flex off of that. That's where successful people, you know, thrive in life is, is they're flexible in that regard. So too many people are very regimented. They get up every morning, you know, at 8 o'clock, 7 o'clock, whatever time they get up. They go to work every day, you know, flying a desk or pounding nails or whatever, you know. And it's, it's the same old grind every day. And they get into this mindset and come the weekend, like, man, I don't want to do the same old thing. I'm going to lay on the couch, eat Twinkies, and have sex. And so, you know, and, and so that's the end of the week is where it all stops, right? And it doesn't start again until Monday. The difference is those that succeed in life and everything that they do, right, they never stop working. 24 hours, seven, you know, and you go, well, who wants to work 24 hours, seven? Well, you know, working's relative. Um, you know, right now we're talking, okay, but actually I'm working, okay? I'm working. I'm doing business development. I'm learning. I'm teaching. I'm still working. Um, you know, and, and it, you may see me every now and then picking up my iPhone. I'm actually working on other stuff too, right? I'm always working. My brain's always working. Um, when I'm relaxing, I'm thinking, okay, I'm thinking about my next move in life. What am I going to do here? How am I going to do that, right? That's how you get ahead. Too many people want the easy, you know, painless way out of things, man. And sometimes you just got to embrace the suck. And that's where Joe and I excel. Okay. Joe and I are not, you know, we're not some kind of, um, you know, some kind of freaks. You know, we're, we're, Joe can tell you about his background here in a minute. You know, Joe didn't come from a good life. Okay. Um, you know, he, you know, he was, I'll let him tell his story. You know, my life was the same way. My, you know, I actually had, I was lucky I had two good parents, but, my dad had 11th grade education. My mom had a ninth grade education. Nobody on either side of my family had money or education, but here I am. Look at me now. You know, I got a PhD and I'm doing pretty well. Why? Because my parents taught me something. They taught me perseverance, right? They told me, they taught me respect and accountability. Um, they may not have had money, but you know, they taught me the tool. They gave me the tools I needed to get ahead in life. And so what we're going to do, what we do with people, yeah, we hold you accountable. We have some stuff that we hold you to standard on, right? It's a task on, but ultimately we got to cut that umbilical cord and you got to go out there and stand on your own feet, right? And, and continue to grow. So we share those tools with you, those mental constructs that you need to create this, this, uh, this life fulfilled, if you will. Um, it's not going to happen overnight. But some of the changes you'll experience literally will happen overnight. But ultimately, your your success will depend on um, your perseverance. It'll depend on your imagination. It will it will depend on um, your willingness to embrace ideas that are you know off the, outside the norm. Okay, um, if you can do that, then you can be you can be at the highest level of achievement as Joe and I are. And, and you know what? And and mark our words, man. Next year, we're going to come back and we're going to be multi, multi millionaires, man. Um, because why? Because we said so. Because not only did we say it, but we can imagine it. We see it. We feel it. We know it. You know, Joe and I are like this all the time. You know, we, we make a lot of money and then we lose a lot of money. It's not because we're irresponsible. It's because we're calculated risk takers. Okay. That's the other thing. Calculated risk takers, right? Those are the ones that get hit in life. The guys that sit around and always take the safe way out and never go anywhere. You never get anywhere in life. It's the calculated risk takers are willing to go out there and wither the storm, the firefight to get to the objective. Those are the ones that are going to succeed. You might get shot a few times on the way. As long as you get back up, you stop the hemorrhaging and continue on, you'll make it to the other end. Joe, jump in there, man. Tell, tell yeah, everybody about your yeah, background. I, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, I just wrote a book not long ago um, um, called Loan Operator, and, and, and it's, it's – uh, it's basically a, a, a biography, uh, autobiography, excuse me, and a, a, and a lessons learned of my life. And yeah, you know, Dale's right. Um, I'm not embarrassed to say it. Um, I grew up rough, real rough. Um, uh, grew up in the projects um, at a very young age. Um, electricity was a, a hit and miss thing. I was an only child of, of parents that argued a lot, uh, a lot um, ugly. And, um, you know, my parents divorced when I was seven. Uh, mother was killed when I was 14. Um, you know, I never got into the drug stuff, but I grew up, uh, very tough, very, very hard, hard. Uh, my father, Italian man, he's passed away since, but very tough love man. And, uh, and my mom was too. And one of the biggest gifts I think my parents gave me besides, you know, you know, they were big on please, thank you, respect your elders, all of that stuff was that when I fell, they never picked me up. And I kind of hated them for it for a while. You know, I was a kid. I didn't know. It's like, give me a hand. They didn't. They made me pick my ass up myself. And I got to tell you, uh, how do you put a price on that? 
you don't. Um, and I, I, that is the biggest gift my parents uh, ever gave me. So when people say, and I've had it and it's insulting, Oh, you were born and you know, they see me driving my, you know, $127,000 Z06 that's parked behind me right now. Oh, you were born with a silver spoon in your mouth. You know what? I don't think so. Okay. Uh, I was raised on food stamps. So, um, I find it insulting when people say that I've worked for everything. And like Dale said, Man, I, I have taken some calculated risks in that um, with money that cost me big money uh, where I was flat broke. When I mean flat broke, I mean flat ass broke, right? I have two nickels rubbed, rubbed together. Uh, and those were bad decisions based on the business partners that I didn't do my due diligence on. So it wasn't the business. It's just I picked bad business partners. So, um, you know, if you pick yourself back up and you keep on trucking. But the, uh, the biggest thing I think that Dale and I, um, and Dale has the best saying about this, and I quote him all the time, uh, is if you're one of these people, right, and you've got your little tactical toolbox that we like to, you know, put gold nuggets in and all kinds of good information, and all you got in your toolbox is a hammer, the whole world looks like a freaking nail. You don't have jack shit to do anything else but hammer a nail into the ground or into a wall. Well, you need to have a socket wrench and a screwdriver and a Phillips head. And that's what Dale and I do. We give you some really effective, easy to put into, into play tools for your tactical toolbox over, you know, what, what do you have, Dale? We have 50 years experience between us, 60 years, uh, you know, of, of all kind of, you know, government, military and, and business experience. But it's up to the person to make sure that they actually execute those tools. So, uh, and we give you a lot of them. And I, I really think that's what separates Dale and I from these other performance coaches. Not that they're bad performance coaches, but, you know, I'll say the same thing. You know, when you break out your resume, you know, bring it. Um, and so I think together, Dale and I are a really formidable team. Uh, and what they, that's so funny. One thing that Dale just said about working. How many deal? How many conversations have you and I had at midnight? You know, talk. And bleep, bleep, bleep. Hey, Joe. I'm like, you know, your work is never done. And I got to tell you, when you and Dale's a hundred percent right about this. When you're passionate about what you do, you don't mind working. You know, the seventy hour work weeks because it's not work anymore. And and if you don't focus on the money, it just comes. It just it just it's a natural progression of being passionate about what you do and empowering yourself, um, it just comes, you know? And, uh, I mean, it has for me, and then I know people I've coached and other, I mean, they're telling us their success stories as we're coaching them. And it's very empowering, man. I got to tell you, and I, I don't, I don't want to go off on a tangent with this, but I got to tell you, man, I get off knowing that right now, if I hang up the phone, I can go run 10 miles and go swim too. And I'm 55 years old. I, I, there is something very empowering about the physicality of what we talk about as well. It's very empowering. And for those people who have never experienced that, I mean, you're on a natural high, man. It's a, the, the most natural high you can possibly have. Yeah. How much does physical fitness have to do with a guy's uh, just mental image of himself? I mean, I, for, for me, I, I, you know, just being physically fit, you know, suddenly you're able to do shit that you just couldn't do, you know, you just couldn't do if you were out of shape and, and, um, and same, same with self-defense and a self-defense situation. Um, you know, it's not everything, but being physically fit is, uh, is something that's extremely important, not only just to be able to physically accomplish a task, but mentally, uh, just uh, the the, uh, uh, the psychology behind knowing that, you know, you could take care of business if you had to. I mean, that kind of – having that kind of confidence, um, what does that do for a guy? You know what? I'm glad you said that because um, <clears throat> it's two-part answer for that. One is um, when I was a fighter, when I, was a, I fought professionally as a boxer. Um, you know, I fought MMA. I, fought, I was a kickboxer. And uh, <clears throat> I've always been a, an athlete always been an athlete but one of the reasons i was such a good fighter i had skill sets but really with the other guy had better skill sets i could outgas him every time because i had the physical i had the endurance i might take a beating for a while but i knew 
if I can stay in there and hold the defense long enough, eventually my physical prowess would overcome his, and I would win the fight just on <laughs> just on endurance alone. And uh, I had a gas tank that you know was you know bottomless. And, uh, and that was one of the things that, you know, my coach always, you know, he talked about, he said, man, you have a heart the size of Texas and you just don't stop. And it's true because I was in such great physical shape. Um, the other part of that answer is, you know, physical fitness, first of all, it's, it's as important as mental fit, fitness and everything else. And it should be a lifestyle. It should not be an optional event every day. Well, if I have time, I'll do it. No, it's, it actually has to be something that you must do because I can tell you, if your body's not healthy, if your body's not fit, and most people are not healthy nor fit, <clears throat> okay? I, I remember a girl coming that I knew, she, every day she would literally drink a gallon of milk, and she would she'd brag about it. I drink milk every day. The body, milk does the body good. Well, she bought into a bunch of propaganda from the American Dairy, Dairy Association, all right? <laughs> Cow's milk is not good for you, all right? In fact, it's terrible for you, and I can go into all kinds of stuff on that, but uh there's a lot of misinformation out there, and uh, this is why I said earlier in the day, we teach the challenge paradigms, right? Um, what you thought was true because everybody else said it not, is not necessarily so. The physical fitness is super important because your body, man, it's the vessel, right? It's going to carry the brain. You know, whether if you're a Christian, you know, it says in the Bible, man, the body is your temple. You know, you, you're supposed to respect it and take care of it. You know, if you're an evolutionist, it's the same thing, man. You know what? Well, you need to take care of the vessel because it's going to allow you to, to, to live, man, longer and be more effective. So it doesn't matter, you know, what your belief system is. The body is a super important. Dave, the founder of Wendy's, remember him? Somebody asked him one time, you know, hey, man, you're, you know, your hamburgers have a lot of grease. And are you concerned that, you know, the grease is bad for you? He made the comment, you know, hey, I don't need my body to carry my brain from A to B, right? And so then he died, what, from congestive heart failure from eating too damn many cheeseburgers more than likely, right? So, um, you know, it, and so it's the, the body is super important. I can tell you that, and joking and attest to this, if we don't work out every day, if we miss a day, okay, no big deal. If I miss two days, like, all right, calm stock. By day three, I'm like, okay, I want to kill myself, right? Because it's, it's so profound, you know? And so it's so important to us because we understand, especially Joe and I, operating at the physical, at the levels that we're operating on, we know how important it is to be in great top physical condition. In fact, uh, we're, we're, we're writing a story not right now about this, Jim, you and I. You know, back in uh, 2015, 2016, okay, at the age of 52, 53, I was a mercenary. I mean, a legitimate mercenary. I was the oldest guy on my strike team, okay? All the other guys were in their 30s, but the next oldest guy was 40, uh, 48 at the time, you know? I led every assault. I led every operation at, at my age out there doing as good or better than any guy half my age, right? Because I had the fitness to go to support it, Okay. You know what? It's the it's the horses I told you about in the beginning. You know that thirty two year old horse can keep up with that six year old horse, and then at the last minute just drop dead when it's time to check <laughs> out. And that's who I am. And so it's super important that you everything in your body is normalized and is in a state of homeostasis and is healthy. Um, we're inundated with toxins, and we go all into that kind of stuff. I dispel a lot of uh, myths of, about uh, you know health and fitness and what's really going on with supplements, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Your body, if your body's not right, your mind's not going to be right. And here's another thing that you need to consider, right? How many of you got out there gone to a medical doctor for, you know, health issues? And you look at the guy and it's like, damn, dude, you're in the obese morbidity, you know, scale, man. You're <laughs> overweight and you're a medical doctor. You should know better now. Do you not believe in your profession? Do you not believe in, you know, in the dogma of, of what you're teaching? Or, you know, so it sends the wrong message. And worse is when you meet a medical doctor who's smoking and, you know, and, and eating cheeseburgers too, right? And so, um, I always tell people that, you know, the outside is a projection of the inside, okay? Um, we, we, people judge you by two things. One, if they meet, meet you first time, they're going to size you up. They're going to look at you and look at how you dress, how do you take care of yourself physically. Um, the second thing they're going to wait for is to see what dribbles out of your mouth. How do you speak, right? And so that's going to tell me a lot about the person you are. Um, a person has got a shit in one bag is going to be squared away both inside and outside, okay? And so, again... You know, and that has a that has an impact when I hire people. Okay, when I look at people, I want to I want to look at your presentation. I want to see who you are on the outside, and then I want to hear who's in the inside, who's operating in there, right? So it tell me a lot about you. So this is where we're going with this. But uh, to answer your original question, physical fitness and health is is paramount. If you want to be successful in life and you want to enjoy your life. Um, it's paramount that you take care of your body. Joe and I are living examples of guys in their mid fifties 
that are they're they're living like rock stars in their 20s okay i'm not going to name how young our girlfriends are or anything like that but i can tell you right now our na our age is not a hindrance in that regard um it has nothing to do with it you know um everything we do you know i, I was taught i was led to believe that you know especially when i was in the military that, you know, once you hit 40, man, you lose your marketability in the business world, you know, like, man, you're nuts. Why? Because, well, you don't have as much longevity. People are not going to want to hire you because, you know, you won't be around that long, blah, 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 blah. You know, or you won't be as productive or you have health issues. And I almost bought into the paradigm, right, until I, until I had an epiphany when they go, wait a minute, that's bullshit, right? And so, you know, so that's another myth that's out there. And, and I can tell you right now, here's the problem Joe and I have at our, at our age. We are so successful that if we fail at anything and we go out looking for a job, we're never going to get a job. You know why? Because we're overqualified. All right. Nobody's going to hire us. Nobody's going to put us, you know, they're not going to have us turn wrenches because they know we're not going to hang around very long. And guess what? All the executive seats are full and most people feel like they can't even afford that actually happened to me years ago. Um, I, I, I was going to work for a company overseas, $350,000 a year. And, uh, the first question out of their mouth was, Hey, comp stock, is it? <laughs> <laughs> They're like, we didn't even have to research it. Didn't even have to look at my resume. It's like, no, 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 we can't, you know, we can't afford it. Can't afford it. Well, you know, I can't even get a shot at it, man. Like, you know, so, there, you know, I, that's a good problem to have, right? If you're so successful that you can't downgrade no more, right? For me and Joe, we don't have no choice. We got to continue looking forward and climbing up that hill, you know, to success. We can't go back down the hill. There's, there's no hill yeah. below us. There's nothing but yeah. cliffs, right? And we're going to die. So, you know, yeah, physical fitness is just is just as important as mental fitness. Fitness, um, it's it's emotional fitness. Um, all these things, you know, these collective parts is who makes us what we are. And if there's and if any of those are shortcoming, okay, it's almost like a wheel, right? You know, we Joe and I used to talk about cogs in a wheel. You know, we talk about the mind, body, and the ether. These three cogs in a wheel. One of those cogs is too short. Guess what? You're gonna have a bumpy wheel. It ain't gonna go very well, right? They need to be all be to be air, congruent. Of the same length and equal in order for you to to roll as as effectively as you can to success. Wow, that's pretty cool. I just said it. Roll Damn, do you actually cool. sound educated? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I made that up. <laughs> it's pretty good. Don't use that again. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I, I know. Uh, yeah, after uh, after being an entrepreneur for a long time now, uh, you know, there there is no going back. Once you get a taste of of being, you know, being being your own boss, you know, once you once you get a taste of that, and I'm, I'm assuming that this is what's going to happen to guys that you're coaching, you know, once they start getting a taste of what, what's, uh, what, they're, what they're getting, you know, once they start, start feeling better, well, you know, once, once they start getting this idea of risk taking too, well, there, there's, that's a huge factor, you know, this, this idea of playing it safe all the time. Right. I mean, uh, what, what, you know, a lot of people think like, you know, you, you either got it or you don't. You're either a risk taker or you don't have it. And, and I found out that that's bullshit. You know, you, you, you can, you can actually learn to be a guy who takes bigger chances. Yes, sir. Uh, you can, you can, you can be the, you know, you, you, you know, one, one of the things is like, you know, well, do, do I take a chance and, and join your personal coaching program? I mean, you know, that's a risk. You're, you're, you're taking money out of your pocket and you're risking it. It's like, you know, look, look, man, <laughs> that, you know, I can tell you right now, that's probably a pretty small risk, you know? And, and then, uh, my personal uh, experience has been that, that once you start hanging out with guys like Dale, once you start hanging out with guys like Joe, once you start getting a taste of what they're offering you and the taste of the life that, they, that they're laying out for you and showing you, hey, man, here's the tools. Here's how you can make it work. Here's how the wrench works. Here's how the screwdriver works. Hey, this one is a Phillips head. You know, it's a little different. You know, once you start, once you start getting the, the, putting the pieces together, um, you know the, the the kind of life that starts developing. You you just like Dale said. You're gonna you know turn around and say, "Well, I I don't want to go back there. I don't want to be eating Twinkies on the couch." You know, uh, you know maybe sex all day is okay, but you know tw eating Twinkies on the couch all day and 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 feeling like shit and then looking like shit. You know, you 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 know you're not want to you're not gonna go want to go back there. And um and so I'm assuming that that you, this is what you guys are offering. This is what you. You know, I, I haven't taken your, your program. I've seen your webinar and and I really like what I saw, which is why which is why you guys are here today. I really like what I saw and I think you can offer these guys on our list uh, a different kind of life. Yeah, and I appreciate the opportunity, you know. Um, you know, again, I think it's a perfect fit anyways, because you know, you know, we obviously, you know, have products through you as well. 
And, uh, you know, and I like to think of myself, at least, you know, I'm speaking personally now as a visionary that look, can look way down the road and see what the opportunities are in life and what the challenges are going to be in life. And by the way, notice I just said challenges, right? Um, you know, when I, I look at issues in life, I don't look at them as problems. I look at them as challenges. It's a matter of perspective. And when I change my perspective, it usually changes the outcome. And if I can't change the outcome and if I'm failing at something, it's because of one thing. I don't have enough information. That's why we fail. We don't have enough information, right? So I got to figure out, I got to get more information so that I can change my attack angles until I can hit that objective that I want, right? Life is full of failures, man. Joe and I have failed a lot of stuff. In fact, you know, I, 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 Dale Comstock is defined by 90% of his failures and 10% of his enthusiasm, okay? That's what, that's what allowed me to be successful. That's it, man. Nobody gave me nothing. I just, you know, I, you know, I keep failing, I keep failing, I keep learning, and I keep attacking. What's important is commitment. Once you're committed to something, you know, you stay the course. And you know what? If you can't commit, don't waste your time because you're gonna, that's time you're never going to get back. But once you're dialed in, you're locked in like a pit bull, go for it. Get, get what you want out of life. And uh, these are the kind of things that we want to bring to people, you know, and it's, you know, it is a business. Yeah, absolutely. It's a business because, you know what? Our time is our time and it has value to it. But uh, we like doing this. We're, as you can tell, we're very passionate about it. And, um, you know, and if we can help other people, other like-minded people that want to be, you know, better versions of themselves, we're here to help you. And, um, and so that's what this is all centered on, you know, our, our program. Um, you know, we have a lot to, in, 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 in a lot of areas that we can help, you know, and, 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 and offer and provide, you know, as you know, we've got products through you, Jim, um, you know, and so, um, it, again, life is about choices. You know, it's a, it's a series of compromises. Do I go left or do I go right? You make your choice, right? Um, you better make an educated choice. Um, hopefully, you'll make an educated choice. But guess what? Even if you make the wrong choice, it's okay. It's a lesson learned, right? You, you go back and you, you go back to the start and you do it again until you have the right information, the right directions of success, and then you follow it. So that's what we're here to do. And uh, again, I will, I'll emphasize, you know, um, you know, um, I'll put in a shameless plug <laughs> for tier one performance coaching and come to us and, uh, you know, register for our, um, our membership and, uh, get our Intel updates. And this is stuff again, like I said, a minute ago, we don't provide this to the public because of our backgrounds. Um, Joe and I both have intelligence background. I had an intelligence background in special forces as well. And, uh, there's a lot going on in the world today. And a few years ago, actually, Six months ago, if you would have asked people, you know, would we be here where we are today? And nah, that'll never happen. Look where we are. We just went through this, uh, I'm going to call it a fake pandemic, um, an event, I guess, and well, a virus event. And then that didn't work out too good. And here we are now. And, you know, and we're, we're facing an insurrection, a real world insurrection. This is what Joe and I have lived overseas. We know how it works. We know what, you know, how, we know how insidious it is. We know how it creeps in. And before you know it, you're like, damn, let me change. What happened? And so we're in that phase now. Um, and if you're out there listening, you know, there's a, there's a quote by Sun Tzu. He said, don't depend on the enemy not coming. Depend rather on being ready for him, right? And so how many of you are out there are you are ready for what's coming? Because I'm gonna tell you, it's not gonna go away. Um, it's not, and it's gonna get worse. It will get worse. Take it from two guys that have been there, done that, and, and can, we can see it happening. We know what's happening. We can, we can read the encryption. No, you guys can't, but we can. And the message is very clear. We're in a war. It's gonna grow. It's gonna grow. It's gonna grow beyond November, before, beyond the elections. God forbid, you know, you know the, the elections don't go the, the way the opposition wants it to go to. <clears throat> it's only gonna get even worse. And my question to everybody out there is, are you prepared for, the, for those days? Is your family prepared? Are you prepared? Um, you know, fightfast.com is a good source for that type of information. I mean, there's a lot of products out there on, you know, on self-defense, on firearms, on trainings, and, and, and so much information that's been basically over the years um, you know, Fight Fast has done a, I've known about Fight Fast for forever. Okay. I, my, I made my first products through them since in 2001. Remember that? And uh, yep. <laughs> that was almost 20 years ago. Yep. And so, um, and they were around before then. All right. So they're, they're very good at what they do and they've got a hell of a library of, of, of knowledge and tools and things, even gear, um, that they can provide you to help you for these trying times. And, um, again, it's not going to get better and you don't know what you don't know. I guarantee you don't know what you don't know. And a lot of what you do know is wrong. 
Okay, you bought into the you bought into the bullshit. You bought into the tribal knowledge. You bought into the to the media's bullshit. And uh, what you don't know, you don't know. And so, what we can do, especially at FightFast.com, is we can show you what you don't know, and we can teach you what you don't know, and make your survivability into thrivability. Embracing the suck. That's where Joe and I live, man. We we love living in the sewer, man. In the shit. That's cool because <laughs> you know what? Not too many people can do that. But man, we can make a lot of money at it. You know, the mindset's different. Let so, me, Joe. Uh, yeah, I was. Go ahead, sir. Go ahead. I was just gonna say, Joe, jump in here and tell me, tell, tell me a, a a little bit about the program. Just, just, th throw in whatever you're gonna say here. I don't want to cut you off here, but uh, and, and then and then describe this program to me. Uh, I I, I want to say that this, this is not a fight fast program. This is this is Joe and and Dale doing this, and uh, I, I'm not affiliated with it anyway. Right. Uh, what I saw in, in in the webinar really touched a nerve, and I thought, you know what, uh, what these guys got to say can can help people that are on my list and people that I know personally. So anyway, Joe, yes, go ahead. Uh, so while I've been sitting here, I've been reading some comments. I've got a rather large Facebook following. Um, and, uh, you know, I have very specific beliefs and opinions about what's going on today. And yes, I do wear reading glasses. So, um, I want to read one of the things that, um, you know, I've been talking about on my Facebook page is this thing that's been going on in Seattle. And if you're not aware, like Dale says, there are six or seven square city blocks that basically the police and the leadership in Seattle just gave up. And now I think that they're calling it uh, Free Capitol Hill or something. It's like a new, it's like Antifa's headquarters now. So I've got all kinds of people on my Facebook page. And uh, I told this one guy, I said, look up the U.S. Code of Federal Regulations that defines terrorism. Okay, and I'm, I'm going to read it to you. I quote, the unlawful use of force and violence against persons or property to intimidate or coerce a government, the civilian population, or any segment thereof in furtherance of political or social objectives. That is right out of the freaking manual. Okay, Pretty that ain't clear. me making it up. You have to be blind walking around without a damn cane if you don't see what's going on right now is domestic terrorism. If you don't, and if you're listening, you're a fool, world-class fool, okay? Shame on you. Shame on you. You're drinking the wrong Kool-Aid. So we've got that going on right now, and Dale is right. Unless something happens, um, some type of unequivocal event uh, that, that cools this down, it's going to get worse. It's literally like one plus one plus one is three. It's a no brainer. Um, so, and here, here is the most dangerous part of this um, is we are now in a situation where you are now required to pick a side. You're either, and I'm not going to say white or black. I'm going to say red and blue. You are now required to pick a side, either the red side or the blue side. There's not an orange side. It's one or the other. OK, um, depending on what side you pick, you're either friend or foe. It's just that simple. OK, and I'm not who's ever listening. You are definitely entitled to your opinions and your beliefs. I just want you to understand the position that we are all now being put in. This makes it extremely dangerous. There's no gray freaking area. You're either on the red team or the blue team period okay so very dangerous times and, and for guys like dale and i it breaks our hearts because we fought for this country but we've lost untold amount of friends fighting for this country and um to see this happening is very personal for us i i i i know that for a fact dale and i've had these conversations the other thing i want to say is this this is completely off of what we're talking about but this should drive home a point driving home from the gym yesterday uh, I kind of live out in the boonies and I notice all kinds of traffic being stopped in, in, in police lights right almost in front of the road that turns into my property. Well, I parked my truck because I could walk home. I was walking home and there was a fatal accident right there, dead. I 
lady was killed, right? I mean, she was still in the vehicle. They were trying to extricate her. Anyway, guys, if you think tomorrow's promised, I'd like to know if you've got Jesus's cell phone number because there is no promise for tomorrow. You have got to make yourself right today. Yesterday is over and tomorrow is not promised. What you have is today. What are you doing right now to make yourself a better person, to protect your family during these insane times that we're going on? What are you doing physically for yourself? I mean, it goes on and on. Think about that. If you think you're doing all the right things, and hey, God bless you, you know, you're, you're the 2%. Uh, if you're not, um, think about it. Think about, you know, um, what could you be doing better? Uh, there are people out there that can help, and that's Dale and I. And um, look, do we have all of the answers? Of course not. Dale and I are stu perpetual students. We learn every day. Um, you know, just like Sun Tzu said, be a student of war. You know, Dale and I are students of war. I mean, I still read books. As a matter of fact, I'm reading a book right now. Um, uh, and it's, it's all about business and, and, and uh, business warfare. So we are perpetual students. We're constantly learning. And so um, just think about those things, guys, uh, or ladies, whoever, who's ever watching this. Um, we only have today, and today's pretty scary. I mean, we're living in unprecedented times. And if you are literally caught, uh, you know, out in the tide when the freaking tide goes out and you've got your pants down, you're screwed. You're, you're, in, you're in a world of trouble uh, if this goes any, any, uh, any worse, and it may. And no one can predict that, but based off of what Dale and I have seen in other countries, Dale is 100% right. This is step-by-step -step escalation. You know, it's counterinsurgency, guerrilla warfare. It's, it's happening. So anyway, I'll get off my, uh, my soapbox. <laughs> no, I mean, this is, this is important stuff. I mean, it, it is, it, you know, I, I read a book called Follow Through, and um, it, it described, you know, the, the kind of things that uh, – uh, basically, he, uh, the, the author said, um, you know, the average person is, is like driving in a car and there's two steering wheels. One steering wheel is, is manned by a, a big giant gorilla. The other steering wheel is manned by a little guy, Poindexter, with, uh, with glasses. And, uh, you know, the gorilla represented food and sex and sleep and the, all the stuff that we love, you know? And, uh, and the, and the Poindexter guy was, uh, you know, was just the smart guy, you know? And, and of course what ends up happening is, is this car ends up going in the direction that the gorilla wants it to go in because he's just freaking stronger. He's stronger. And so the Poindexter's job was to outsmart that gorilla. And one of the ways to do that was, was to, you know, you know, there's multiple ways to do that obviously, but you know, it's, it's kind of like, you got to be smarter than your dog, you know? kind of thing and it's the same thing going on here now one of the things to motivate people is is emergencies that that actually gets the gorilla to do stuff that you want one of those things is emergencies you know we got an emergency going on right now in our country you know and if that's not motivating people or getting you thinking like hey you know maybe i need to be doing something uh you know it should be uh dale and Joe have got multiple other techniques. Like I said, you know, there's a whole toolbox of stuff, you know, but, but ultimately uh, if, if you're not looking around right now and there isn't some light bulbs going off and, and saying, Hey, you know, maybe this is the time that I need to get up off the couch, put the Twinkies down and, uh, and actually start paying attention to how am I going to protect myself and my loved ones? You know, how is this going to happen? It isn't going to happen by magic, you know? It isn't going to, you know, one day you're going to just know this stuff, you know? And, you know, the good news is you still got time, you know? And, and, and I'm assuming what Joe and Dale have to offer is, is not going to take years. I mean, I'm, as, as Dale said, this is stuff that starts happening immediately. Why don't you guys tell me, a little bit, get, get into some nuts and bolts about what somebody has to do right now, where do they got to go, what website to go to, uh, and, you know, and, and what we're talking about here to sign up and just start getting a taste of what you guys are doing. Yeah, so we have a website, uh, www.tier1performancecoaching.com. We also have a Facebook page. Um, ideally, go to the uh, website. You can register on there. Um, you can you can send 
information. There's a ton of to that as well. And, uh, and then basically what we'll do is we'll return your email and uh, arrange a call so that we can discuss the program with you. So those, that's probably the easiest way to connect with us. A um, little bit about the program, by the way. <clears throat> we, you know, we talked a, a little bit around it, but uh, essentially what you expect from the program is one is, all right, we're going to help you uh, rebuild your body and your health. That's, we're going to start with that, and then concurrently running parallel to that, we go into this, this mindset that we, Joe and I have been alluding to for a while. We're going to talk about mindset and then eventually roll into some other areas um, centered on autogenic conditioning, metaphysics, um, many other theories that are out there. Um, we'll go into that, and then eventually we're going to go into some business development stuff for those that want to go down that road. Um, I have some clients that all they want to talk about is business development. They don't care about anything else. Um, and so, you know, it becomes kind of a menu. So you, at some point you can pick, yeah, I want to focus more on that or focus on this. We go into uh, survival learning skills. We talk about things like uh, mindset as it concerns to protecting yourself and your family, right? Joe's really good at that. Um, and so we go into some other areas. These are things that you're not going to learn in any school, okay? There's no, there's no um, comprehensive curriculum out there anywhere at any university that teaches what we're going to teach. What we put together is our own curriculum based on um, years and years and years of, of our own academic experience as well as our experiential knowledge. And uh, we put a lot of abstract concepts together to drive home one thing, one teaching point. At the end of the day, our success is based on, um, on our imagination, on energy. And so we really go down that road quite a bit, and but we hit a lot of other areas. We have a lot of guys that come to us go, man, you know what? I'm not sure if I can handle myself in a street fight because I've never been in one, um, you know. And and so I don't even know how to think, you know, tactically. I don't even know how to think strategically. What you know? What do I have to do to to be more aware and more alert? So we go down that road with you as well, right? Trying to change your mindset and make you realize, man, that uh, you know if if you're going through this life in what we call condition white, you're basically a walking victim just waiting for, you know, for a, a predator to, to an opportunistic predator to take advantage of you. Right. So we talk about a lot of that as well. So we go through a range of, of topics and, you know, Joe said the court curriculum is an hour long. Uh, I, it is an hour long minimum. I, I can tell you on average, it's an hour and a half to two hours per session. And, uh, and sometimes it goes longer than that or the sessions will go beyond eight weeks, right? So it's not about, you know, we have this content, it's limited to this right here. You know, the, what's important is we, we don't teach to, um, to time, we teach the standard, okay? And what Joe and I think is a standard. And so, you know, we want to make sure at the end of the day, when you walk away, you walk, you, walk, you walk away not only educated, but more confident. And you now have the tools that you need to self-actualize, to become this person that you wanted to be. We've given you all the tools, all the secrets, okay? We're going to give you the secrets, and they're out there, and they're based on science, and we're going to give it to you, and then it's up to you to implement and apply those um, or not. And at the end of the day, it comes back to what we talked about in the beginning, accountability and responsibility. At the end of the day, you know, your success and failures are dependent on you. We're going to give you the tools and the knowledge. It's what you decide to do with them is going to make the difference between success or failure. Yeah. And one of the things, too, um, that I, I want to emphasize, and um, I don't think we've even discussed it, is that um, we do not use a cookie-cutter approach. So as a new client, you're going to be sent a, uh, a client questionnaire, and it's got a lot of questions on it. Some are you know, based on ratings of 1 through 10, yes or no. And the reason we do this is we – Dale and I, our fiduciary responsibility as performance coaches must understand who you are as a person. What are your motivations? What are your fears? What, bus, you know, what are your hot buttons? All of these things we have to take into account when we coach you to um, better deliver the product to you that you can understand it. So a lot of these performance coaching uh, companies, you know, They've got their playbook. Here it is. Blah, 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 blah. Done. Doesn't work that way. Uh, never will, never has. You've got to understand who you're talking to, what their experiences are. As a matter of fact, one of the things they're going to be required to sign is a confidentiality statement. Why? Because not only are you going to be sharing, quote, unquote, sensitive information about yourself, but that door swings both ways. Dale and I are going to share with you stuff we're not going to post on Facebook about our lives. 
but we're going to share with you. Hey, let me tell you about something that happened to me. Check out how this happened. We're going to be sharing with you our life experiences. So you're going to be required to sign a confidentiality agreement because it's private. So, you know, and we're very picky. Dale, what do you think? Like one out of four people, we don't coach. Something like that, you know, that we just, they're just not good fix, uh, fits to our, um, to the way we coach. And that doesn't mean they're bad people. We're bad people, but we're not going to waste your time, your money, or our time coaching someone that we know at the end of the day, look, they're, they're not receptive to this. And based off the questionnaire that we send them, you know, they've got underlying issues. And I, I for example, if you're a drug addict, look, Dale and I are not qualified to, <laughs> to groom you <laughs> off of drugs or alcoholism. That is an underlying issue that has to be addressed somewhere else. We can't do that. We're not qualified. So people that have those um, scenarios in their lives where they've got these, unfortunately, that's not something we can help you with. But if you don't have stuff like that in your life and it's just like, look, you need fine tuning. I say it all the time. You're a 500 horsepower engine. Here's a great analogy, guys. You're a 500 horsepower engine. Dale and I are going to slap on a supercharger and crank you up to about 700 horsepower. That, that's a pretty easy way to tell somebody what we're going to do. We're going to make you perform beyond what you thought was possible because of these paradigms that you've had, because of these narratives that you've bought into. And when you finally listen to what we're saying and apply it, you're going to go, duh, like literally. <laughs> I mean, how, how many times people go, oh my God, like the light bulb went off. And, and even we've even had this happen. They're done. They're like, you don't need to coach me no more. I got it. Dale, am I not lying? I have one guy. Like, yeah, I got it. I don't need any more help. It clicked. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. We've had people pay full amount. And after one, two sessions go, man, I'm so jacked and up and so motivated. Thanks a lot, guys. You, you, you've already redirected me and they're gone, you know? And so not because it's bull look, nobody asked for their money back. It's not even about the money. It's, you know, most people get it right away. And uh, sometimes it just need a little push start to get them going in the right direction. Right. What we try to do is provide you the, the, the navigational instruments as well to get you to your objective, right? It's not just giving you the push start and giving you the 700 horsepower engine. We're going to give you the GPS to get there as well. So, um, yeah, you know, we've been, we, you know, not to toot our own horn, but I think we've been pretty successful. And uh, I don't, you know, everybody's, you know, been helped in one way or another. Everybody's walked away with uh, some life-changing experiences and knowledge. And, um, you know, what you do with it, like I said, is really up to you at the end of the day. We're going to give you the tools, the constructs. Um, it's up to you to decide how you want to, uh, how you want to build on those. And, and uh, again, I'll say it again, life is about choices. It's a series of compromises. And uh, you're the only one making those choices. Yeah. And, and, and it's, again, it's, it's about <clears throat> taking a chance too. taking, you know, if you, if you can't take the most minimal risks in life, uh, you're probably not going to get too far in life. And, um, and, 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 you know, taking a step right now to uh, take a small risk and just check out what Dale's got, uh, what Joe's got, uh, is probably, you know, a baby step in the right direction. Uh, where, where do they go right now? Where, where would somebody go to just to see what you guys got to offer? Yeah, our website, like Dale said, you know, um, Tier 1 Performance Coaching, and it's the, the number one, not O-N-E, it's tier, T-I-E-R, one, performancecoaching.com. And um, you can go on there. We've got a really, I got to tell you, I, we got a really cool video. If anything, watch the damn video. Uh, <laughs> it's a cool video. Dale and I are very proud of it. It took us over a month to have made, but everything that in it, everything that's in it is absolutely true. Um, go in there, read, read about our credentials, you know, our certificates, everything is on there. It's all out there. Um, but read, take a look at our philosophies and what we offer. Um, and if you think it's a good fit for you, then by all means, there's a phone number on there as well. Uh, give us a call and, you know, give us, you know, 24 hours, return the call. We are busy or an email and it's just info at tier one performance coaching. And we'll get back to you. And like Dale said, uh, we do a free consultation. We'll talk to you. And after the consultation, if we feel you're a good fit, we're going to send you a questionnaire. Uh, and you're going to send it back to us. And we, and again, the confidentiality statement, but we're also during the process of our coaching, you're going to be getting homework. Okay. Um, it, it ain't lengthy. It ain't taking hours, but we're going to send you one and two pages of homework 
that emphasize points. And so we can take you to the next level. We got to know where you're at at that level. So we're going to have you fill out a, you know, a questionnaire on something else. You know what? I do the leadership piece. So I'm going to ask you all kinds of leadership questions, you know, good and bad. And so that's how we build and, and, and engineer, you know, psychosome engineering. That's how we engineer uh, these new mindsets. We have to know what we're working. Are we working on a V6, a V8, a V10? You know, where are you at? Does your carburetor clogged? Is your transmission jacked up? We've got to know how you're working. And then based off of that, we will put the right tools to fix it. Is there, is there actual personal contact? I mean, are these guys able to, you know, email you, talk to you? I mean, what, what, what can they, what can they do? I mean, let's yeah, just no, say so we actually conduct all our, um, our counseling sessions, if you will, just like this through video chat. So we're actually interacting just like we are right now. They can see each other. We can talk to each other. Um, Joe and I travel the globe, literally. I live in Bali. I also, I'm actually right now in my other home in Florida. Um, Joe's out somewhere in the woods right now in an undisclosed location. He's also going to <laughs> Bali. And, uh, and so, you know, we're available everywhere around the planet. I have coached people from Abu Dhabi to Philippines to Bangkok to you name it, in Australia to the U.S. It, you know, the world is much smaller now because of, uh, of the Internet, right? So, but it's a one-on-one -on -one consultation just like this. The way we normally run it is I'll take the first four, uh, the first four weeks and then Joe takes the second four weeks. We've kind of split up the curriculum. Um, and so, you know, why did we do that? Because it makes it easier for us, for us, one, and also it allows us to focus on what we're really smart at, I guess, if you will, and what we're really good at. And so we're delivering, you know, the best possible information, best product, best service um, that uh, each one of us are, you know, subject matter experts in, if you will. So that's how it works. And uh, it's pretty painless. We do all the work for you. In fact, uh, you know, uh, we provide summary sheets so you don't have to take notes, um, you know, so, you know, we have your full undivided attention. And, uh, you know, and it's basically, I tell all my clients to open up and get ready to drink from a fire hose because here it comes. It's going to be a lot of information. <laughs> you, know? I, you can tell right now, I like to talk, right? Sometimes I talk way, way, way too much. But uh, this is, you know, this is the kind of, I'm, this, I'm very passionate about this, as is Joe, you know, we like doing this stuff. And, uh, you know, it's all about information sharing and our information sharing is really based on, you know, our real world experience, our real world successes and failures. It's also based on our knowledge, our academic knowledge. Um, some of it is, you know, conjecture. Some of it is hypotheses. It's based off of what our formal education our, uh, on our experience. And, uh, and there's another phase, as I mentioned earlier, the four sources of knowledge, intuition, right? We, we really play heavy on that because the intuition, the sixth, uh, the, 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 the fifth element and the sixth sense and the mind, right? This is what really creates who we are um, and nothing else. This has nothing to do with philosophy and everything to do with physics. And that's where we're going to bear down on it. We bring the science to your success. Nothing more. Okay. Well, we got some good stuff here. Um, we'll post the web, the URL of the website below on here. Uh, Joe, did you want to jump in and say anything else? No, I, so I just want to thank you, first off. Uh, Dale has always spoken very highly of you and your company, and it's a pleasure uh, and an honor to meet you finally. And uh, thank you so much for your time. I know you're a busy man. So um, I, I just want to tell you, firstly, I, I appreciate it very much. Well, I'll tell you, it's an honor to, to know both you guys, honestly. And uh, the other thing is that, you know, I get testimonials all the time. You know, we, we, we sell DVDs, we sell products, and I'm sure you guys go through the same thing. And there's nothing more rewarding than getting a testimonial, for example, from a guy. He's in a hotel room. He's in a hotel room in Florida on vacation with his family. You know, these, uh, these thugs burst in, uh, steal all their shit, tell them to kneel down. And he said, I knew right then that they were going to kill us. And I remembered what I learned on a TRS video and it saved our lives. It saved my wife's life. It saved my four kids. And that happens a lot. I get letters like that. I'm sure you're getting letters like that too. And it's one thing that keeps me going doing this. And, uh, and, and, and you guys are, are same thing. You're on the front lines of this thing uh, right now, helping, helping guys become better, better versions of themselves. And I would encourage anybody uh, out there who's listening to this, 
uh, if you go to the URL, we're posting it below on the screen here. Go there right now. Just check out what these guys are doing. Take that first baby step, and uh, and 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 you know, start uh, start the, the the first steps of becoming a better you. Uh, this is Jimbo. Fight fast. Signing off. Thanks again, guys, for for being with me, and uh, it's been an honor. Yeah, thank thanks you for having me. Appreciate it. Enjoyed it.